Hello guys and welcome to Free Birds View. I know there is a question in everybody's mind that what exactly are these large language models and how to learn them. Okay, so I will take you on a seven step journey to learn about these large language models made by OpenAI, Google, Meta and many more free and pre-trained large language models. Okay, so you guys already heard about the GPT-4 stability, AI, Jet, GPT, Falcon and Meta's LLA AMA models as well. Okay, so I, I will explain each of them and how to use them in this video. Okay, so let, let's begin our seven step journey to learn about these large language models. Okay, so let's first start with the basic understanding. Okay, so basic understanding includes the things like uh, what exactly are these large language models and why they are so special and how these large language models are different from the deep learning models. And what are the like main use cases of these large language models? Okay, let's start with the first question. And the first question is, what are large language models? So large language models are actually the subset of the deep learning. Okay, because they undergo training on a massive amount of textual data. And because of that, they have a large size. And large size, they have like million and billions of parameters as well. And they have the exceptional performance across a wide spectrum of NLP tasks. Okay. And th this is how you can see that it works on a like a, a very big textual data. You can give it a textual input and it will provide you the textual output on the same basis as well. So now, why are they so special? They, they are so special because they can generate the coherent, grammatically correct, contextually relevant context and text to you. Okay, they have like exceptional accuracy, ex uh, exceptional response time as well. Okay, so these kind of things make these large language models so special. Now, why are they like uh, so much different from the deep learning models? Because they are different from the deep learning models on the basis of size and distinctive architecture. Okay, because you know about it transformers as well. So, so if you add the self retention mechanism in the transformer and train them on a large corpus of textual data, it can become a large language model. Okay, so the transformer architecture is the foundation of these large language models. And with the help of self retention mechanism, they can capture the long range de dependencies between the text and they can do the versatile amount of task from the text generation to the text summarization to machine translation and the question answering as well. Okay. Okay. Now, now let's talk about the use cases of these large language models. So the basic use case of large language model is text generation, text generation, which, which can be relevant to humans and they generate a human like text as well. If you use the chat GPT, it generate the human like context. They can also do the content summarization, rephrasing, do the code as well and do the NLP task as well. Okay. Okay. So now you have the basic un understanding of these large language models. Now let's move to the next step, which is exploring the large language model architectures. So how these large language models built internally. Okay. So if you see this kind of uh, charts that I have and the first chart act actually want to describe that when you ever put a question in the large language model as well, it search for that question information by doing the feature engineering or the any kind of transformation in their vector databases. Because every time a model is trained, it store the context of that uh, trained text into the vector databases and then search for your question in their vector databases and give you the most possible outcome. Okay, and if you see this right architecture, I have this architecture is of the transformer and by adding the self retention mechanism to this transformer and trained on a massive amount of data, it becomes a large language model and transformer is nothing but uh, encoder and decoder with multiple layers of neurons and activation function with self retention mechanism. But there is another thing that these large language models use. That is called RAG. RAG is Retrieval Augmented Generation. That is a ground-breaking framework that is used by the large language models to enhance, to increase their knowledge base. And RAG can actually make these large language models to remember more 
and enable them to access the information in the real time and improve the context of the information that they are uh, generating as well and providing the up-to-date information. So if you guys see this graph, it shows that whenever a user put a prompt plus query to these large language model as well, the query goes to search for the relevant information in the knowledge resources and then the enhanced context returns to the large language model and then this enhanced context with prompt and query goes to the large language model and it can generate the desired output that the user want okay so in that that way the rag actually work and this search relevant information thing can be increased by making them to access the information in real time or from some knowledge base okay okay so if you want to like know more about how uh, this rag work and uh, what are the like internal architecture of this rag you can see my video and i will put a link in the description as well all okay, guys okay so now our next step is how to use pre-trained models because by you using the pre-trained mo uh, models you can like build your own large language model okay so what are actually pre-trained models so pre-trained models are actually the like the bedrock on which these large language models are actually built so it ex because these pre-trained models are already trained on a large corpus of textual data as well and they have the ability to like to generate text to do the machine translation to do the question answering task and everything okay so if you have a model you have a, a data and you can do the uh, tokenization on that data and then train a pre-trained model and fine-tune it fine-tune it on your specific task okay so maybe you want to just build a pre-trained model only for the language translation so fine-tune your pre-trained model only for the machine translation task only okay and if you see this kind of graph it actually shows that whenever you take a pre-trained model that have trained already on a textual data and you fine-tune it with medical data as well okay then it will like build your large language model for your medical tasks as well okay so th this is how you can use the already trained or pre-trained models for your own large language model tasks as well okay okay and they, they are like some kind of a key concepts that you need to be familiar with okay because pre-trained large language models are already trained on extensive text data as well that makes them to understand the patterns, grammar and context very, very highly. Okay, so large language models are trained on expensive and diverse text data. And some of these large language uh, datasets are like C4, Book Corpus, etc. as well. Okay, and you can like gain insights as well from the te technical aspects of pre-trained models, including the use case of uh, optimization algorithms, batch sizes, because, because uh, to fine-tune these large language models is also a time-consuming task as well okay but also you should be be aware of these uh, pre-trained models because you need to mitigate the bias in the training data as well okay okay so if you if you want to know about like how to use these pre-trained models and build, build your own large language model applications or ai applications as well you can watch this video i will put the link in the description as well okay guys okay now our next task is how to these pre uh, to fine tune these kind of large language models as well okay so fine tuning actually is the task where you just take a pre trained model train on your own data and then use for your own task okay so uh, if you like see this graph it sh it shows that you can select a large language model and select a data set as well specify the hyper parameters and then start the fine tuning for your own job okay, because this data set is your data set your task specific data set is here when you train your large language model on this task specific data set it will work like that okay and the main thing inside this fine tuning is the domain specific data set that, that you have okay and it, it can help you at industry level or your own personal level as well okay okay so now now the next thing is well, what is the like methodology behind this fine-tuning large language models so select the pre-trained model 
that aligns with your intended task okay and assemble a data set that is tailored to your specific task and the time to initiate the fine tuning as well you can have faced so many challenges as well and here's a tip for you in the cases where, where you have lack access to the pre-trained model weights and rely on the utilization of models through an api you can employ the in context learning because by doing the in context learning you avoid the need to explicit fine tuning okay and this approach leverages the model's capacity to acquire knowledge through analogy by providing input and sample output examples of the desired task okay so th this is like a pro tip for you okay now these are like some kind of a summary things about this fine tuning large language models so given a substantial amount of parameters in the large language models fine tuning the weights in all the layers can be resource intensive so recently a parameter efficient fine tuning technique that is called lora and q lora have gained the popularity the q lora actually enables the fine tuning of a 4 bit quantized large language model on a single gpu without co compromising the performance these techniques introduce a small set of learnable parameters called the adapters and which are fine tuned instead of the entire weight matrix that will streamline the process this this is also a prototype for you whenever you are trying to fine tune a large language model use these two techniques to make them uh streamlined and you have to uh make them less resource intensive okay so our next task is how to align and uh, uh post train your large language model after deploy in the production okay so large language model have the potential to produce the content that might be problematic that have bias that is not aligned with the user expectations as well and aligning a large language model refers to the process of harmonizing its behavior with the human preferences and ethical standards okay so that's where the reinforcement learning from human feedback comes because whenever your large language model generates a false uh, output it can retrain on the correct output by the human feedback and you can also have the contrastive post training aims to use the contrastive techniques to automate the creation of the preference pairs that can shows that if this is correct and th this is wrong then it can always choose the correct output for the user okay and uh, by doing the human user feedback loop cycle you can train your large language model and make it better and better with the each human feedback okay so that should be in the large language models and now the next step is how to evaluate and do the continuous learning on these large language models okay so the large language models are always built for a specific task so it is crucial to access this performance and plan for ongoing learning and adaptation and accessing the large language model performance and continuous adaptation needs a uh, enormous amount of resources okay so after fine tuning the large language model it's crucial to evaluate and evaluation is based on your specific task okay so there are like so many evaluation methods are there that can be used on the uh, specific task that you are doing with the large language model if your large language model embedding based then you can use the bert score or the uber score as well if it is a word based then you can, then you can use the bleu wer or it's a character level it's a language level it is a lm assisted you can use all these kind of scores to evaluate your large language model okay and after after uh, doing all these kind of thing you need to assess on the basic task specific matrices as well in so like in the text cl classification you can use the accuracy precision recall and for the language generation task you can use the perplexity and blu score as well you can also do the human evaluation you can check for the bias and the fairness of the model as well you can also uh, check it for the ad adversarial attacks or challenging the inputs to uncover the vulnerabilities and strength of the models as well you need to make sure your model is not provided the secrets of its large language models to the user as well okay and then for the continuous learning as well 
you can make your model retrain periodically on the new data as well you can make it on the active learning as well so it can re retrain on a periodic basis okay okay so now if you want to know how to use these uh, pre-trained large language models and uh, how to do the uh, training and how to use it you can watch my video and the video link is in the description as well okay okay and now the last step is building and deploying the large language models okay so once you build the large language model it is now the time to deploy it in the production you can do it by the constructing an application utilization llm you can deploy the llm based applications as well and also take care of the compliance and ethical consideration because your model should not be biased okay and when do you are, you are uh, talking about the construction application utilization uh, llm you are actually talk, talking about to integrate your large language model in a website okay by api as well or to take care of the scalability and performance as well so you make it with the help of api integration calls okay and if you're talking about the whole application deployment it is based on the llm for example jet gpt okay you can do the cloud deployment or containerization as well also do the monitoring for the dap for the bias and fairness of the model as well and if you are talking about the compliance and ethical consideration that is that is basically work on the data privacy and ethical consideration like it should it should not have bias or giving the misinformation or generating ha harmful content for the users okay guys okay so that's it these are the like seven steps journey for you to learn large language models and how to use them to build your own pre-trained large language model for a specific task so if you want to know more you can watch this uh, prompt engineering playlist and this playlist has everything included in it from the uh, prompt engineering to using the pre-trained models and then deploying it in the production and to know more you can watch my blogs as well on uh, various kind of ai and generative ai topics and we'll meet in our next video thank you guys thank you so much